my goal today is to take the stress out of the production because I know it's always short term. You have everything is like, can you do this next week? Those are the calls I get from the agencies I work with. Very fast, no time to plan. And so uh, we're going to talk about that, why it's important to do it right. You know, because the risk to you, the client, you can't get them there. The individual, they could be barred from the U.S. if you lie and say you're going on vacation. We're going to talk about the right way to do it. And then what we offer to help you to make sure that you can get them there. That's the process for today. And you all should have the presentation as well in my um, materials. Okay, so often I get a call a week before, you know, from Stephanie or somebody from our office or Philippe, and they say, we have, we just landed a client and we just uh, found our talent. Can they go in three days? Um, and then we have to move quickly. So the reason you want to plan before you send them to the airport is to make sure they're going to get in, right? Because there's too much money spent to waste it if the talent is held up at the airport. Um, sometimes if you don't plan ahead, they won't get in and they'll be barred from entering the U.S. I've had some cases where people might have criminality <coughs> or they didn't tell the truth and they look through their bags and they see what's happening. It's not worth it. So this is why it's important to think about immigration at the same time you find your talent. Oh, do you want to close the blinds? Does it make yeah. One? Oh, sure. Let's one see if we can this one? close the blinds because it's, there's a glare. Okay. Oh, yeah, those are perfect. <laughs> Better? Yeah. All right. The other reason why it's so important to plan ahead is the liability. <coughs> liability for the company, for your client. You know, if they're seen as a bad employer, that's it. You'll never be able to send somebody again over the border. If they say, oh, we know you because you've been doing this illegally, it's a big problem. So you want the reputation of the client and for your own agency to be successful and have a positive view by the government officials at the airport. And then here in Montreal, I send everybody, of course, to the Trudeau Airport. They're very, very good. Um, when they know you've done it right, they're very facilitative. They will help you. But if not, um, there are better ports. We can talk about where you want to send people. So when I do this work, most people don't get an actual work permit. Okay, so what I do is I do them as NAFTA business visitors. Under the North American Free Trade Agreement, there's this tiny little space where it says, Hello, bonjour. <laughs> there's a tiny, I call it almost a bit of a loophole. It's very gray in terms of do I need a work permit or can I come in as a business visitor? We make everybody a business visitor, NAFTA B1. That's the ability to go do business and come back. Okay, so that's what we do for each talent and production. Even sometimes we've done it for makeup people who do specialized makeup. They have to be the same person that did it in Canada. We send the same person in the US. That's the category. You're not getting a work permit. You're getting business visitor entry to do what you do. And we'll talk about why, okay? Anna's gonna talk about the actual work permits visas. Mine is almost like a step and you get through. Hers you can stay long term, and a year, two years. That's not what we're talking about in my instance, okay? So this is the category, NAFTA B1. It allows for cross-border business activity. So I say when you do an advertising, I do a commercial, I say you are doing cross-border business activity. You're not entering the U.S. market. You're not taking jobs from Americans, because that's all they care about, right? They even ask you, why are you and not someone else? And you say, it's because the set is already set up, we're doing a dual shoot, we're trying to save money, he's a spokesperson. You have to be able to explain why this person. And they're not being paid in the US, so if they're not being paid, that's the best. When they are, oh, it's a big problem. So these are the requirements. Must be a Canadian citizen. And sometimes people forget that and they think of permanent resident. Not the same. Under NAFTA, you have to be a Canadian citizen with a Canadian passport. So when those people who say, oh, I'm a PR, permanent resident, I can't use this for you. It's a different way. You must get paid from Canada. You must be short term. 
I usually say anywhere from three to five days, sometimes seven, max. You have to have proof of your return. So you have to have your ticket coming back. 